Good evening, everyone. Welcome to this webinar on STEAM with A in brackets, STEAM and STEM, basic concepts and differences. This webinar is co-organized by the STEM Alliance, Scientix and Screeware. My name is Aishwarya and I'm involved in the project and pedagogy tasks and activities with European Schoolnet. Together with us in the room, we have my colleagues Rocio Benito and Chanel Martinez, who will be supporting this webinar from a technical point of view. So if you have any issues with the audio or with the connection, you can just send them a message on the chat here. So while we're on the technical side of things, let's just finish it all off at one go. So uh, this webinar is being recorded. You will also see that all the microphones and cameras have been disabled. So if you have a question to our speaker today, you can just post them in the chat. And we'll have a Q&A session at the end of the webinar today, and we will address all your questions then. You will also find that during the session, we will be sharing many links and a lot of useful information. So we encourage you to keep looking at the chat and um, click on the interesting links and make the most out of the webinar today. And we already have the first link here. That's the signature list. I see that uh, Chanel has already shared it once. So this link is very important in case you want a certificate of participation. It's also important because if you sign this, we can prove that this event took place and we'll be able to organize more events like this in the future. It's my great pleasure to welcome our speaker for the day, Victor Bodenov. So Victor is an educational trainer specialized in implementation of STEAM approach in modern schools. After working as a teacher in public and private schools for many, many years, he's currently working at Screeware in Warsaw. How are you today, Victor? Uh, cannot hear you. OK, so let him take a minute while I introduce him. Uh, so. So let's move on to Screeware. What is Screeware? So I'll take, it the, uh, take this opportunity to tell you a little bit about Screeware. I hope Victor will be back soon. Hmm. OK, so as we all know, technology is growing at a very rapid pace in the last few years, very hard to keep up with as adults and probably for children. And many educational models around the world, they find themselves really like unable to prepare students for the challenges that they will face in the job market in this 21st century and the skills that they need, etc. So this is where Screeware comes in. Screeware believes it is time to radically innovate both the teaching profession and the experience of students. The team at Screeware is a major fan of uh, 3D printing and robotics. Now, this is all very new to me, so I'm learning a lot myself. So they have therefore created an educational labor laboratory called Scree Lab, which is based on 3D printing, programming, robotics, engineering, and e-learning, all created for teachers to be used regularly in their daily work. So using modern hardware and software combined with suitable curriculum, Screeware believes that they can make education fun and well adapted to the needs of the 21st century. It's all very exciting developments, and there's a lot for us to learn here today. And um, I find it interesting what's behind Victor over there. It almost looks like it reminds me of SpongeBob, but it probably is not SpongeBob. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's an interesting, interesting association. Yes, that's yeah, true. <laughs> it's, it's, it's the yellow and the blocks that remind me of SpongeBob. So uh, Victor, welcome today to the webinar. Thank you very much. Thank you for the invitation. It's a great honor. It's a great pleasure to be with you today. Uh, today, as we have already uh, stated, we are going to try and figure out the difference between those different uh, educational concepts, STEM, STEAM, and STEAM in brackets. We will see how it has, what influence it has on our nowadays uh, educational programs, educational system in general, and on our life. Uh, and also, we will try to delve deeper into the history of the concepts, uh, how they emerged, and see how can they be implemented on some practical uh, on some practical examples during the lessons in different subjects. 
So I hope you are ready. I hope uh, everyone is having a great day. And of course, if you have any questions on the go, I would be more than happy to answer them. So STEAM, STEM, and STEAM in brackets. Different educational concepts, though they do have a very common, um, very common basis. Let's have a look. So well, we are starting now, and we will start with the historical concepts of these educational approaches. We will see how they evolved, and then we'll see where it led us and what is going to happen in the future. So yes, STEAM, STEM, and STEAM in brackets, as I said before, three uh, different educational approaches, but they are all binded together. And they are all binded together by the aim. And the aim is to introduce our young students, our learners, with technologies, with the, the challenges that the future labor market might uh, throw at them, and also to introduce them with different approaches when it comes to usage of these technologies in the classroom. So before we start with the actually uh, practical implementation of these concepts, let's have a short let's have a short look at the traditional education concept of traditional education that was uh, actual not that long ago. Traditional education. So when we say traditional education, the first thing that comes to our mind is a classroom around 50, 60 years ago, when the teacher is the center of the universe and the teacher has the full authority uh, uh, on the transferring the knowledge from one source to another. In that case, it was from the from textbooks, from other educational sources to students. Teacher, as I said before, was the center. It doesn't actually mean that students didn't have an interaction during the lessons, of course, but the authority of the teacher was the last destination um, of all the processes in the classroom. Uh, the heavy theoretical focus was implied by the historical concept. It's it's hard to it's hard to distinguish the historical concept when it comes to uh, different countries, different regions, cultures, from the actual needs of education. Nowadays, technologies are have um, a lot of influence in our lives, and that means that we need to adjust uh, to these new uh, challenges that we have. Back in the day, the historical, co the historical context was different, so it was very theoretically focused with the perspective of implementation of those skills in the future. There was no need for immediate effect. There was no need for inventing a new way of introducing the materials. Everything was there. Everything was there ready for the students to open the book and read it. Limited creativity and students' passiveness. Well, when I say that, it's this statement is a bit exaggerated. So it doesn't mean that the teachers of previous years did not interact with their students and they did not try to make their lessons interact. Though there was no specific focus on these aspects of educational process. Um, information transfer, when it comes to uh, when it comes to transformation, uh, transportation of one uh, specific topic to another, like interchanging them in terms of one subject, it was very one-sided. The teacher transferred his knowledge to the students that uh, how the process looked like. Uh, the subject was more important than the skill. So let's imagine that we are in a classroom, let's say uh, 50 years ago, in the country where rocket science, rocket building was very important for the country, for the state. That means that the final aim was to build this rocket. And it doesn't matter who would do that and in what way, and it doesn't matter uh, how hard it might be. The outcome was the most important. For this purpose, students were introduced to theoretical material, and only after that they started to do their journey when it comes to uh, practical implementation of their skills. Uh, the educational approach of modern uh, of modern education is completely different. So uh, lessons become student centered. Uh, it, it was always student centered to some point, but uh, it, the, there was no specific need for the teacher uh, to uh, to make this process focused specifically on one student or another without uh, without relation to the needs of specific students and their cognitive uh, uh, abilities, preferences. There was no such need. 
practical focus now is still very important. But nowadays we are focusing on not only the final aim, but uh, at the immediate result as well. So whenever a new technology, whenever something new is being implemented in the classroom, it is important to see the outcome, the physical manifestation of what students are actually studying right now, right now, this particular day, this particular week, or semester, or year. Uh, information transfer differs now, so it's not only the teacher passing the information to the student, but other way around. The classroom becomes an interactive environment where everyone is not only the recipient of knowledge, but also the source of knowledge. Of course, the, um, the, um, the practice teaching in, in implies that we need to uh, self-improve all the time, which also means that back in the day, uh, teachers were gathering feedbacks from you know, their personal experience, trying to improve their educational approach. Um, nowadays, this process is not only formal, but also very interactive and very uh, it, it's happening right now, live in the classroom. So, uh, from this perspective, the interactivity of the exercises, of uh, the topics presented, of the whole educational process is very important. It's uh, it's a live process which demands uh, a lot of adjustments. Uh, different classrooms have different preferences. Uh, many students have different needs. So, interactivity is very important. The skills are more important than the subject itself. So nowadays, <clears throat> we face the problem, so to say, not the problem. We face the situation when problem solving skills are more important than the subject that is actually presented in different educational establishments. So uh, modern technologies provide us with a lot of opportunities and, and the very usage of those uh, implies non-standard situations which uh, demand non-standard decisions. From this perspective, not only the theoretical basis is very important, but the practical ability of students to, uh, to apply their skills and to um, invent new ways to solve different problems as well. So from this perspective, um, the knowledge becomes not only the data, so to say, but also the ways how to use this data in different uh, situations. It, it, when, it, when we use the term technology, it doesn't mean that we only focus on those students, on those uh, subjects that focus on, um, on, the, on the process of evolving of uh, technology in general. So anyone is using right now uh, technologies, like we use it with smartphones, laptops, Everyone in the field of education cannot imagine his or her life without technology. And this, they, this very same thing is uh, applicable for any student of any subject. Humanities, arts, technologies are very important. Later on, we will go through the possible changes that might go through the labor market and we will try to see how different uh, professions and uh, job positions might change in the future. But for now, we cannot deny the fact that uh, the usage of modern technologies in the classroom and in everyday life is very important. And that's another focus of these educational concepts to show how those technologies can be useful and can be used outside the classroom as well. Because the life will get will give those people, those young students, the challenge, and they will need to use all they can in order to achieve success. When it comes to teaching methods, of course, it depends on, uh, on the subject. It depends on the curriculum of the school. But uh, there are a lot of. I'm sure that a lot of you have teaching experience, and all of you have uh, your you have your own fav favorite techniques on how to present a new topic, how to engage students in the interactive process of education. Uh, still, there are some that are very important. You can see them on your screen, like gamification, for example. Especially nowadays, and specifically in the context of new technologies, it's very, very important as well. Um, we know a lot of examples when games, video games, board games can be used to enhance the educational process. Uh, Microsoft Minecraft, for example, had a lot of great educational uh, programs that help students to achieve um, great results in their studies. Um, collaborative learning is, I think, is one of the most important techniques when it comes to group learning, when it comes to group activities. Um, 
even with the, even outside the context of STEAM and STEM, STEAM brackets, it's very important to give students opportunity to socialize, and very, it's very important to give them opportunity to work in groups. Later on, few of them will work on their own, maybe on some independent projects, but it's very important to give them a chance uh, to see how it is to uh, how it is important to find themselves in the group of like-minded people when uh, the whole group works together to achieve the result. Uh, in this case, collaborative learning uh, can uh, be very much handy. Mm, flipped, flipped classroom gives a great uh, possibility for students to experience the other side of education process, to, to feel how it is um, to run the classroom. And on one hand, it's very important for the teacher uh, to see how his or her students behave in such situation and also get feedback about uh, their uh, approach to this new situation. And also uh, it gives a chance for students to see how education is just more and the classroom is just look more than coming to school and answering some questions that the teacher asks you in some homework and projects. Uh, it gives a lot for uh, enhancing the interactivity of us. Um, Self-learning self aspect has always been very important in any um, form of education. Though I might, though I think that sometimes it's, it's been used over excessively a bit, um, self-learning is a very important skill and definitely should be used in the modern classroom uh, to some extent, of course. Um, unfortunately, some teachers nowadays puts a little, a little more emphasis in it than it should be done. But technically, self-learning is the part of any curriculum of any school around the world, and I'm sure that you also know that. All these teaching methods are united by one specific uh, cause, to bind the teacher and the student together, so to give the interaction. And even when it comes to the historical con uh, context of uh, educational approach, different approaches, it was still based on the interaction between the teacher and the student. Um, the, the teacher himself, as the figure in the classroom, is very still very important, and it, it is very important to see how the personality of the teacher um, affects not only the transition of the knowledge, but also affects young minds, affects young students, and forms their, them as uh, personalities, individualities, and uh, so forth. So these teaching methods are all interactive, in, even though not all of them focus on interactivity itself. It just uses it as the method to transfer the information. Now, uh, let's get uh, to the topic itself, to STEM and STEAM and STEAM and brackets. Um, when did it happen? Again, we're again moving back to the historical uh, context of the education. Mm, and in this case, we also should look at the political, kind of political uh, approach to education that was present back in the day. And at some point, is to some extent, is present even nowadays. Um, in 1950s, 1960s, um, technological advancements was a great, uh, lever was, was a great political tool uh, in order uh, to state um, to, to state the country, to one some specific country or region, as a global player. Uh, in 1957, the Soviet Union created the Sputnik, and it was a great uh, achievement for the whole for the whole human humankind, of course. And it was used very much from the perspective of political influence for other countries, and it became a catalyst that started this uh, race. Um, to start this race when it comes to technological advancements. As the answer to that, in 1957, NASA was created, and it was also it gave also a great um, it was a, a great impulse for the evolving of the whole branch. Um, at some point, people just found themselves uh, at the situation where they don't have enough professionals, they don't have enough specialists to push this race forward, to make more uh, and more technological advancements, and they needed the results very quickly. Um, this process was not uh, a short one. It took some time for, for people to change their minds in terms of changing the educational approach. Uh, in 1970s, 1980s, there was a commercial run by Apple, um, uh, 1984, 
If you haven't seen it, I strongly recommend you do that because it's, it's a very important uh, milestone for the whole history, not only in education, but also in our, in, in our social life. It was a great social phenomenon which, shown, which has shown that technologies soon and now, right now, are accessible to everyone. They are very important and like in, like in the novel that we all know, they can influence the minds of people to, to an enormous extent. Uh, it, this this particular event, this uh, commercial of 1984, started the whole movement of uh, educational transformation. Uh, it was subconscious, I, if I can use this word, kind of transformation of education first, but later on in 1990s, the, it was the, the first time the STEM acronym was used, which of course you know stands for science, technology, engineering, and math. Uh, later on, after some time, uh, educational initiatives in the United States and Europe have begun and we have come to the point when STEM and STEAM are almost heard in every corner of the world and it are very important in order to prepare young specialists for our specific needs. Because at the end of the day, very practical approaches something that we need to take into consideration. We have some needs right now to push our uh, technological technological process of our technological uh, evolution further. And if we won't have enough specialists and professionals in different field fields, we just won't be able to do that. So we need to adjust. We adjust our curriculum, we adjust our educational approach. That's how new educational concepts arise. Uh, STEAM, and I mean STEAM with the arts, not with all subjects uh, right now, is a relatively new concept. Um, it uh, emerged in 2006, and uh, it is still a very, uh, it is still a very technological-based educational concept, but it implies the usage of other uh, disciplines such as humanities, linguistics, arts, in the uh, purely uh, scientific, purely technological subjects like computer science, uh, math, physics, and so on. Um, we can divide, uh, we can, globally, we can divide the approach into two main uh, spheres, the soft skills and uh, scientific skills, technological skills. So A stands for art, which means that soft skills here are most important. Uh, Working groups, uh, problem solving skills, creativity in its pure form are something that, uh, uh, that appear in this educational concept. Mm. STEM is also a very creative educational approach and many students have the ability to show their creativity in a pure technological form, uh, implying, different, implying different techniques from other subjects helps students to uh, use creativity in its pure form, uh, using all those uh, soft skills that I have mentioned uh, before. Um, when it comes to innovation itself, so without innovation, we cannot imagine our lives, and also innovation is any other sphere of our life, also uh, undergoes um, uh, with this route. Uh, starting from agricultural age, thousands and thousands of years ago, uh, innovation was always something that uh, uh, that pushed our whole civilization uh, uh, to create something new, to to improve ourselves and in any sphere of our life. And it's actually quite interesting how those concepts that were used thousands and hundreds and thousands of years ago are still being used right now, but we don't even we actually don't even think about them. Uh, STEAM is not, STEAM as educational concept is relatively young, but the approach to, uh, uh, approach to using these kind of art skills in science uh, are very, very old. When it comes, for example, for Celtic um, civilization uh, hundreds and hundreds of years ago, all the knowledge back in the day considered to be scientific was passed down by the oral tradition of singing songs and just telling stories. Everything was in the, in, in the form of oral uh, knowledge uh, transition. Mm. Such people as Leonardo da Vinci also showed a very, very big impact on, uh, of art 
in science. And if we take, if we, uh, if we take as an example um, some other uh, some other usages of parts in, in technology, for example, there there are different. Uh, Mm -hmm. Jewelry for uh, people who need uh, injections uh, due to the medical conditions. There are many uh, scientists, serious scientists, that actually do create those uh, those crafts of jewelry and different kinds of jewelry using nanotechnologies and using uh, progressive technologies in terms of helping people. So even without educational context, the mm, the level of uh, interconnection of art and technology is present in every sphere, uh, in every branch of science and uh, of our life in general. Uh, we are now in the transformation age. The time moves quick, quite fast right now, so we need to keep up. That's why we are making up those concepts, so to say, which is, say, I'm saying it without uh, no disrespect or something, but we need to come up with something new in order to come up with something. That's my. That's probably the easiest way to describe what is happening right now. Uh, progress uh, implies progress. When it comes to specific jobs and specific uh, uh, specific labor market preferences that are uh, present right now, uh, on your screen you can see the jobs that are present in 2022. Some of them are very well known, and it's nothing special to be a specialist, something like that. Of course, it is something special to the person who uh, possesses knowledge in this kind of sphere. But my point is that those things that we consider to be progressive right now, in 10 years, 15 years, will not be as progressive as we think they are. Uh, when it comes to robotic engineer, robotic maintains AI. When, when it comes to AI, it's quite a hard topic, especially when it comes to the moral and ethical uh, part of it, but I'm pretty sure that very soon AI will be used to uh, on a much. Um, it will be much more developed than it is right now, and I'm sure it will be used in more branches of uh, technology, more branches of uh, industry, and uh, other things. Uh, that's why uh, AI engineer might need uh, the understanding of philosophy, the understanding of uh, art skills. Uh, in the ethicist uh, approach to the AI and its usage in the modern technology. Data analysts is something that is very, very famous, very popular right now, and it definitely will lead to um, specialists uh, who delve deeper into data analysis and that show uh, how data can be used in solving different problems. So data detectives I'm sure also uh, will appear very soon. Uh, drone engineer, artist, space engineer, everything becomes, uh, everything undergoes this transformation age and everything will be changed in the future. So our uh, goal, our aim right now is to be prepared for it and not only ourselves, but also prepare, um, also prepare young students, also prepare young minds to be ready for those challenges. Uh, that's quite uh, an interesting question. If at the end of our webinar you might think about some uh, jobs, professions, uh, or anything else that might appear, I would be happy to hear your thoughts and we could discuss it later on. Um, now let's go. So basically, STEM and STEAM with arts is more or less, uh, more or less covered. When it comes to STEAM in A in brackets, all uh, subjects, the influence of all subjects in uh, education, it's a bit different approach. It's also a quite relative, it's relatively new, but um, the concept is the same. We include interdisciplinary approaches in the educational uh, process in order to make uh, the, the education itself more interactive and more flexible. And that is the aim of those three approaches. Well, now we're going to have a look at specific examples, examples of exercises that are used in different schools and uh, curricula around the world. They're super simple, and I'm pretty sure that maybe I'm pretty sure that some of you have used something similar. And maybe later on we can discuss them in terms of practical implementation, in terms of how useful they can be during the lesson. So the first one 
and the concept of buying the open orange. It's a very simple STEM experiment which uh, is being used in many schools. Um, and uh, I didn't mention that before, but uh, those three concepts, they, um, their main aim is to show. It's not to l learn only, but or teach only, or study only. It's also to show what you're studying. It's very important for students to have the tactile feeling of what they're studying, to see what it is that the subject of uh, the object, sorry, of the uh, education process. So that's where these kind of short and very uh, interesting from the perspective of students' uh, experiments uh, come in handy because it is not only uh, giving the creativity a boost, but also it encourages them to find something else to find. Because if they see that science can happen here and right now with their hands, it will encourage them to, uh, to go deeper into the topic, to find other uh, ways of checking different, in this case, uh, in this case, physical concepts. So all you need is just some water and some oranges. The demonstration of concept of this exercise is very simple. You just show it. You just show the concept of the biology. So you take two oranges, one is peeled and one is not. You put it in the water, and the one not peeled will sink, and another one uh, not peeled will float, something like that. And then after it, uh, later on, students will ask questions about this experiment, and these questions can be supported by specifically by the dem demonstrational aspect of the experiment. So they see it, they know how it happens, and it's much easier later on to explain how it works. Um, what, uh, what STEAM uh, techniques could be used here? Let's first face the educational value of the experiment. Is it useful from the, from the point of view of like scientific point of view? Yes, very much. It shows the concept of the bias of knowledge. So the final aim is achieved. Uh, does it help students to somehow, um, I mean, now I'm talking only about the, the bare demonstration without any additional uh, techniques used in STEAM and STEAM and does it Does it help students to somehow use uh, their uh, social skills to problem solving skills. Not really. Uh, I know for sure that in many American schools this experiment is the part of the curriculum, but uh, when it comes to additional activities, every teacher comes with his or his ideas. Can it, it be, can it be added? Can we add some group activity with that? Of course we can. Uh, can we add some uh, description activities like students uh, uh, going through this small research and um, put down their data and results of their own experiments, uh, put them down? Yes, of course we can. So the, same, uh, the educational value remains and it is well enhanced by the demonstration, the demonstration of course. But this A and A in brackets is missing. So how can we enhance that? Um, Let's go through another experiment, a uh, uh, classroom experiment, the maze construction experiment, which also has a very, very similar approach and very, very similar uh, final aim. Students are building um, using any any teaching aids that this specific school can uh, have uh, during the educational process. They are building the uh, the maze. Well, the maze can be used for different purposes. The maze itself can be used, but also, for example, they have some robots and they have some other teaching aids that might use the, uh, the maze. They can build it in order, let's assume that the school has the robot, in order for robot to go through the maze. Uh, demonstrational purpose is that? Yes, it is. We show, so first of all, we show how to build it. We, uh, we encourage students to uh, develop the, the basic engineering and construction skills. Uh, and after that, they have the, the result. They have the result, they see, they can show to the parents and the friends. And that's another aim that uh, was uh, met in terms of STEM uh, educational concept. Uh, now, here, this experiment gives um, a lot of opportunities to uh, implement uh, soft skills from other subjects, from other disciplines. First of all, group activity is very uh, important here. The group of students could be do, uh, divided into smaller groups and be assigned different roles. The one part of the students could be assigned as engineers. They, for example, use a usual pen and paper, pencil and paper to 
uh, draw a draft of the maze of the labyrinth. Uh, another uh, subgroup of students uh, would be the builders, so to say, who would use their basic, uh, who would use their basic uh, engineering skills, construction skills to actually build the maze. It doesn't mean that subgroups cannot uh, interact with each other during it. Of course, uh, students from different subgroups will do different tasks for uh, uh, as well. But assigning the role is very important. It will give the feeling uh, of being something, of being something, part of something bigger, and uh, having uh, his or her own role is expanded. Every student will appreciate that. Um, so the second subgroup builds the experiment, uh, the means. And the third group, uh, depending on uh, what teaching aids the school has, they implement the uh, they use the channel. Like, would it be uh, would it be for the robot? Would it be for something else? Maybe for some physical activities they could run through it, go through it. It depends on uh, the teaching creativity. Uh, the point in this experiment is to include as many uh, problem solving skills and the soft skills as possible. A group activity, chatting. Um, as problem solving skills, oh, yes, also check. And what is also most important, different subgroups have different goals. And together, after that, the goals of different subgroups of students lead to the global goal. And that what STEAM and STEAM brackets is all about, achieving the global goal using uh, problem solving skills in the group activities. Of course, that's not all, but that's one of the most important aspects of these educational concepts. And of course, after that, uh, students could, I mean, could have other activities connected to it. It can be used multiple times and can be adjusted according to time management, uh, teacher preferences, and many other aspects, of course. Uh, but again, what was taken from the STEM educational concept, the demonstrational aspect, to show how it's done, and being enhanced by those soft skills, problem solving skills, and creativity, Technically, students would just use uh, sketches, draft of the uh, maze before they actually build it. So they need to uh, apply their skills and their art skills to finish this exercise. That's what that what makes it a bit different. As I said before, STEM, STEAM, and STEAM brackets they all include the creativity aspect and they all uh, prioritize it. It's very high the priorities to give students opportunities to be creative. But they use different, but they use different approaches to this creativity. STEM includes creativity in pure technological form, while STEAM and STEAM in brackets include uh, creativity in its pure form, not uh, connected uh, specifically or directly to some uh, scientific uh, research, some scientific experiment or exercise. The flexibility is it important indication? Of course it is. We can, we can uh, safely assume that not all students that are fond of math, physics, biology, chemistry, and any other uh, uh, subjects would become scientists in those specific branches. Still, using those technological aspects and those uh, uh, techniques from other disciplines will help them in whatever role they choose. Uh, as I said before, creativity in its pure form is the main uh, is the main aim of the whole educational process right now, and that's what really is great about it. That, that we have changed this, this approach of being that when the subject is more important than actually the student who uh, is uh, involved in this process, and it's not going to be this. The subject will evolve as well, but it's the student who uh, got his or her education will contribute to will contribute to this transition process of uh, one subject or one discipline or one branch of science becoming something else becoming something more complex becoming something more uh, uh, important for our nowadays society uh, so in this way we can see the difference between these two concepts but of course it's it's a very exaggerated uh, approach to to judge these two uh, concepts only on these small exercises. Of course, it, the educational process is much more complex. It includes many personal, uh, many individual and personal uh, uh, features as well. But still, if we have a look at the global goal, they both are aiming at the same thing, which is used different, uh, different methods and also 
uh, use a different um, use a different level of interdisciplinary techniques. So, uh, to give a short conclusion, STEAM and STEAM in brackets is all about four things: communication, collaboration, critical thinking and problem solving, and creativity. When it comes to STEM. It has a hard scientific focus, technology as the main force of, uh, of progress, and creativity in its pure technological form. So even those things that you can see on your screen now can be interrelated, and they can be, they can serve the same purpose. But at the same time, both of those concepts, uh, even though serving the same purpose, use different methods, and those methods that are being used during the educational process, then they either give you more opportunities or not. So it's hard to compare them in terms of educational value because both STEM educational projects and STEAM and STEAM records are very useful and very uh, important to be implemented in nowadays classrooms. But it also it also it is also hard sometimes to distinguish what is more important: soft skills or technological advancement how to implement them in the classroom, because uh, having, um, having experience in teaching, I'm sure that you do, you do know that some groups of students, some schools, some uh, classrooms, so to say, are, it's not that easy to implement those specific techniques, and it should be adjusted according to uh, students' preferences. As we said before, student-centered lessons are something which is happening right now, so that's what we should aim for. But again, one uh, final word that uh, binds it all together, creativity. Creativity and the form of this creativity is chosen by the teacher and of course influenced by many other things like curriculum and, and some practical teaching things that are present uh, in some specific classrooms. But yes, this is pretty much it. So today we tried to have a look at the basic concepts of STEAM, STEM and STEAM brackets, A brackets, and I hope that it was useful. I hope that you liked it. That's it from my, from my side. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Victor, for this very intriguing and fascinating presentation. I feel like I have learned a lot myself. I particularly um, really enjoyed that slide about how professions evolve with time by the year 2035. That was something that I'd never thought about before, how everything can become you know, IT oriented. And also, uh, I think if I'd had an experiment like the orange uh, buoyancy experiment back in school, I might have been more interested in science. Lost opportunity. And also, uh, also the fact that Sputnik and Apple and Apple and you know other developments from the 70s and 80s are still relevant. It's uh, it's it's it was a very fascinating discussion. Also, that change is inevitable, and we have to transform our education to meet the needs of students. And yeah, and before we move on, I'd just like to direct the participants here to the participation list in in case you have not signed the signature list. Please do. You can find the link in the chat. It was shared some time back, but in case you need it again, please uh, do sign it. We need this so that in case you want the uh, certificate, the participation certificate, we will be able to send it to you. And now it's time for the Q&A session. I think there is one question and uh, inquiry. I do see learning. one. Yes, inquiry based learning. Is it a good method? What do you think? The short, short answer is yes, <laughs> it's a good method. And why is it good? So first of all, it's good because students can make uh, real life connections to uh, to you know to ed educational. Uh, processes that happen in the classroom. So it is very connected to the real life, so to say. So I would say that, yes, it's a very good, uh, it's a very good method to do. The teacher guides the students through the whole process. 
it, he or she gives the students a lot of information about it, and they have a lot of freedom to make these real life connections. Though uh, I do admit that I think sometimes it's very really hard to um, take a specific topic and include it and um, present it in terms of inquiry uh, based learning. Um, I would go with the yes, yes. Of course, if you have an opportunity to check it out and have, try it with your students, I would recommend it to do that. But it's sometimes it's it's practically it's hard to implement. That's that's the only thing uh, that uh, that comes to my mind on the minuses of this. Uh, but yes, really good. That's my that's my humble uh, opinion. Okay. Do we have any more questions? Okay, I have a few. Uh, do you have any more resources like uh, the orange experiment that you shared? Uh, yes, uh, actually, we are as a company and just me personally, we are working on the, on the so to say on the list of tick of the list list of practical tips for teachers on how to use team and STEM uh, educational techniques during the lessons. So yes, of course, we do have more of them. The, the format of our, of our today's meeting uh, uh, did not uh, did not give a lot of opportunities to show all of them, but I would be happy to share with them uh, to share them with you later if you are interested. I would be happy to visit again and maybe show you something more and show you something uh, interesting in terms of practical implementation of STEAM and STEM in the classroom. Okay, thank you. Um, maybe I'll ask. One or two more questions. I think we have a few minutes. So, hmm. So, what would you recommend to teachers who want to be involved more in STEM activities, but they feel they're not very well equipped in technology, or you know they don't have the skills right now? Um, when it comes to technology and uh, the access to the teaching and it, of course, it's a very hard question. Many schools around the world do not have an access to technologies, but they are still very uh, enthusiastic when it comes to the education. They want their students to be involved in this process. Uh, this general approach to problem solving, to finding the way to uh, present students with problem solving skills, uh, luckily, is not only connected to the uh, to the usage of technologies in the classroom. So, I'm sure that every teacher is focused on self improvement. And if we put these three important milestones in our educational uh, process, uh, our educational process, like uh, creativity, flexibility of the information of the subjects that we uh, implement in our classroom, and also uh, problem solving skills, then the outcome would be very good. So it all comes with, it is very connected with the personal motivation of the teacher, of course, and the ways how she, he or she is determined to use these techniques during the lessons. Even though I do understand that sometimes it might be uh, hard to uh, technically just implement them, not all schools have the, the tools, teaching aids that are needed. Uh, but I'm sure that if the teacher is dedicated to the purpose, then it should be fine. Yeah. And you said that you were a teacher for a few years. So do you have any methods that you really enjoyed implementing in the classroom? Um, well, gamification is always very nice because everyone likes to play games and the teacher has a chance to, you know, have a short break, so to say, and play with the his or her students. I'm joking, of course, the teacher should always be aware of what's happening, but uh, during my lessons, uh, I was using a lot of techniques when it comes to gamification, group activities, and also I was trying to make my classes as interactive as possible. So I think it's all about finding the right balance between uh, giving your students a lot of authority in the classroom, a lot of uh, a lot of possibilities to express themselves, but to a uh, to a reasonable extent. It's all about uh, the right balance between the uh, teacher and the student, not like a person, but like a concept, the person who teaches and the person who studies. And it's all about finding the right balance in their interpersonal relations. Because even though we are discussing uh, purely scientific and technological concepts uh, connected with education, interpersonal relation and uh, the bond between the teacher and the student is very important. And it also influences uh, the educational process. I'm sure that 
the thing that I just had mentioned is by itself obvious, self-explanatory, and I'm sure that all of you know that. But it's sometimes it's uh, important to repeat ourselves these things, not to forget what's important in our in our life, educational life. Do you think it's difficult to find this balance? Um, is it more difficult in primary school or is it in, in uh, high school? Do you think it's easier in high school? Um, it's very much. It very much depends on the personality of the teacher himself, mm. herself. But also, I think that it's hard. Primary school, high school. It's just not that simple, and it demands a lot of effort from both sides. So I, I'm not sure if uh, we can generalize it like that, because even even not age, like even not speaking about age groups, but specific students in specific groups, it might be very very different. Different. So when it comes to these kind of interpersonal relation uh, questions, related questions, then it's very hard to you know to to find the pattern, to find the rule. But yeah, of course, just like in, in usual normal life, it's hard to to create a bond with someone, and the teacher is someone who bonds, uh, binds uh, many young students together, like in one interactive environment, which is the classroom. So it's it's very very hard, uh, regardless of the age. You know. Okay, and we have a question here. Do you have any particular method that we can promote STEAM to our girl students? Well, I'm not sure if the question is aimed uh, at the specific group of students, girls, like specifically uh, groups of, of girls. I think it doesn't matter what gender the students have. Uh, all the methods that we have discussed today can be applied for, for example, integrated primary school, a part of course from uh, those Apart from those needs that different students have in terms of, for example, their physical uh, disability or something else, it all can be combined together using those simple techniques. So one specific technique, interactivity, a lot of group, uh, a lot of group activities, demonstrational method of uh, STEM exercises that we have uh, the time shown uh, today, and uh, also creativity in, in its every form. Even if we have like a very simple exercise, it's up to the teacher to add the, cre the creative aspect to it or not. It's quite it's quite simple when you get a hang of it, but it's very really hard to start. Uh, unfortunately, sometimes it's just easier to follow the curriculum and follow the guidelines that we all have. But it all comes to the personal motivation. A adding creativity, Adding also uh, the problem solving skills in the group activities is the most important. I'm sure that your girl uh, students would appreciate that uh, as much as any other group, uh, regardless of their gender, age, or any other uh, any other specifics. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for that answer. I hope um, the person who asked the question. <laughs> yeah. Welcome. Any more questions? We just have a few more minutes to go. Hmm, so it seems that a lot of uh, responsibility is on the teacher, how he or she creates a bond with the students and how they manage to convey these new concepts and ideas. Do you think they have enough professional development opportunities? You mean the teachers? Yep. Uh, so do they have, uh, could you repeat the question, please? Yeah, do you think teachers have enough uh, developmental opportunities uh, to build themselves up and to be able to connect with students in a good way to convey these uh, really, you know, complicated ideas of STEM and STEAM? Well, definitely, yes. The whole idea of the classroom and, uh, uh, you know, the interactivity of the classroom, the lively process of knowledge transition, it, it implies a lot of opportunity to have a lot of activities together and somehow find those uh, common things that uh, bind people together. But again, we are we are discussing a very, uh, let's say, very specific topic of interpersonal relations between people because at the end of the day, the teacher is a person and the student is a person. It all depends on, you know, on their personal approach, personal motivation. Maybe some, someone has a bad day today. Maybe maybe the student is not in good mood. I'm talking now and for about a very particular situation. One day, one classroom, one situation. But it all piles up and it 
forms the global effect of this of this binding. So it's very hard to tell. Uh, of course, there are a lot of opportunities to find this part of. I'm sure that most of you, a lot of you, and do have an experience of this special bond with their teacher, which goes through the years and uh, will remain forever. Of course, there are also experiences that are not that uh, bright, so it's hard to tell. What the, the end of the teacher, as I said before, including these educational concepts that we have uh, today discussed, is to combine those uh, uh, those things that cannot be taken for granted, like interpersonal relations, with the global goal of introducing the technologies, introducing the creativity and all other things that we have discussed today, in order to make it a great mix for the for the young personality, for it to, to self-improve in the future and to find to find their way in life. So yes, I think they have a lot of possibilities to do that, but it's a very it's a very broad topic. Right? Yeah, I think Victor has summed it up quite well. And I think uh, now it's time to end our webinar today. Uh, before we end, uh, in case you haven't seen the latest Scientex episode, you can find the link in the chat. You can also click right here on the slide. And as a reminder, this uh, the registration for the Scientific Conference are uh, now open. You can find the link for this also on the chat. You can click on this to learn more about the conference. It's one of the major science education networking events in Europe. So we hope to see some of you there. And finally, thank you so much, Victor, for being here with us. For uh, This was a very, very interesting discussion. Thank you to the teachers for uh, being here, for asking uh, very fascinating questions. The recording of this webinar with the slides will be available on the STEM Alliance website in a few days. We'll also send you a follow-up email with some details. Thank you again, Victor, for your presentation. Thank you very much. Yeah. I think we'll let you all go. It's already six. So. Thank okay. <laughs> you. Thank you very much. It was a great pleasure and a great honor to be with you today. And I really hope that we uh, will meet in the future and discuss more. And, uh, you know, I hope our next meeting could be even more effective and productive than this one. Thank you. I hope so, too. Yes, yes. I'm looking forward to that. Goodbye. Yeah. Bye, everyone.